This is The City, hosted by Mayor Rob Ford and Councillor Doug Ford on In-Depth Radio, News Talk 1010. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, like I said before the break, uh, the provincial budget came down, um, and just after that, the federal budget came down. And I, I think it was good news, um, but I'm going to let people listen to uh, the minister uh, talk himself about uh, his budget that he presented to all the Canadians. And I want to welcome uh, Minister Jim Flaherty. Hello, Mr. Flaherty. How are you, Your Worship? I'm doing well. Thank you, Minister, for... Uh, taking time uh, out of your uh, busy schedule on a relaxing Sunday to come on our show. Um, maybe you can tell the listeners um, what was the, maybe the five uh, top points uh, of your budget and how does it affect, um, obviously, uh, Toronto. That's, that's what I'm uh, concerned about. And sure. Take it from there. Well, just like you're, you're doing in, in the city of Toronto, we're trying to, at the federal level in Canada, make sure we have our, our financial house in order, that we get rid of waste and uh, try to run the government better and be more careful with taxpayers' money. So the first thing we did is make sure we're on the right fiscal track. So we'll balance the budget uh, by the medium term. Within the next few years, we'll have a balanced budget again in, uh, in Canada. Now, to get there, we had to uh, trim government a bit. So there will be uh, $5.2 billion less spending over the course of the next uh, few years. And unfortunately, this means some people who are working in programs that won't be continued or are being changed will lose their jobs. So there will be about 12,000 federal civil servants across the country who will, be, who will be laid off. Now, that's out of a workforce of, you know, we're the largest employer in the country, almost 400,000 people. So it's not that, that much in terms of percentage, but, of course, every job is, is important. And this will happen over the course of three years. So it will give everybody a chance to, to reorient themselves and get, to get other positions. So we did the financial... Uh, steps that we need to take and then we're dealing with some of the big issues the city issues are important of course and we're making sure that we continue the building Canada fund to 2014 there's a new 150 million dollar infrastructure improvement program the gas tax of course is permanent and that's important for for big cities like the like the city of Toronto and we're continuing our discussions with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities to have a new plan uh, for 2014 and after that, as you know, we've invested in subways before. We're investing in the subway from the city of Toronto all the way up into York Region. And that's the first time that's been done in the history of Canada that a federal government has invested in subways. We're dealing with immigration issues, which are important uh, for Toronto, and regulatory reform for large projects, which is important for the, for the whole country. There are other things here as well, innovation and so on, and, uh, and other major things. But basically what we're doing, Rob and, and Doug, is we're looking down the road. We're looking to 20. 20 and beyond that to make sure that we've got our house in order and we're going in the right direction. Minister, uh, it's Doug here. Yeah, Doug. Um, how, how do you think Toronto might benefit from the, the new, you mentioned the $150 million community infrastructure and improvement fund, and maybe you could just explain that to the folks listening. Sure. We designed this not to build great new buildings or anything, but there's a lot of uh, public infrastructure in Canada, certainly in the city of Toronto, as infrastructure gets older, that needs improvement. And uh, we want to uh, help out with that. It is per capita granting, so no city in the country will get more than the city of Toronto. The city of Toronto will get the most because of the size of the population. Go ahead. Go ahead, Doug. No, I was just saying, I don't know if you had an opportunity to listen to some of the uh, stats that I, I was calling out on or from the economic development, but uh, Toronto is as hot as a pistol right now on, on the real estate market, uh, even on the commercial market, getting... Uh, Office space is, is dropped uh, below 5% compared to the 905 area. That's 9.7%. How do we keep this momentum going? How, how do we keep the buzz in the air in Toronto here? Well, I, I, you know, what can governments do? I mean, I, we all believe in the private sector. You know, they're the generator of jobs. The, the, the people get up every morning and go to work, and, and not those of us that are in government. But governments have a big role to play. We need to get rid of waste and make sure our spending is, is tight and keep taxes down. Uh, you'll notice in my budget this year there are absolutely no tax increases, and there aren't going to be any tax increases. We don't believe in raising taxes, and we know we can we can run a tight ship, and uh, people appreciate that when when well when what you're doing at the city of Toronto, what we're doing at the federal level in Canada, people appreciate that that their tax money is being uh, taken care of. What can, what more can can be done in the city of Toronto? I think you know we're encouraging the growth of the financial service sector in Toronto. We're trying to attract. Quite frankly, financial institutions from around the world. These are good jobs. I mean, in the greater Toronto area, we've got about 400,000 people working in, 
in that sector. The auto sector is close to my heart, of course, out in Oshawa mm-hmm. and so on, and it's coming back gangbusters. And it's not, you know, there's the direct jobs, but all those indirect jobs all through the greater Toronto area in the city of Toronto that relate to the auto sector. It, it, I mean, these are great industries mm-hmm. that we have going for us. All we need to do, I think, is make sure governments don't, don't get in the way and do what we have to do. I know you're trying to do a lot on transit. I think that's vitally important because that's a, that's a, that blocks uh, the economic growth that we could have if people can't get around and goods can't be moved around efficiently. Minister, off the top of your head, do you know how much money you're putting into the subways up on Spadina? Up on Spadina? You know, I, I don't remember the exact figure. I know our flow program was was at least six or seven hundred million dollars. So right. there, these are major uh, contributions to subways and to transit all through the GTA, including, of course, the city of Toronto. Right. Anyways, Minister, I want to thank you so much for your time. And uh, just on, on another note, uh, the, the NHL playoffs are starting, and I know you are uh, almost a professional hockey player. You're on a scholarship down in, uh, where was it, Colgate? No, Princeton. 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 Yeah. Who's going to win the Cup? Do you have any predictions so far? Oh, man. <laughs> Am I putting you on the spot? <laughs> no, you know, I don't mind you putting you on the spot. I mean, because, you know, the Leafs are out of it, the Habs are out of it, of course. You know, I like the Vancouver Canucks. I like that. I like that hockey team. So I gotta, I think I'm going to be cheering for them. I'm going out to Vancouver this week, give a speech. I'm going to go rah, rah, bit of a shout-out for the Canucks. Absolutely. I think we're on the same page there. Anyways, Minister, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Minister. All, All the best. best guys. Okay, Bye. thanks okay, a lot. Bye-bye.